So what's the next? So we, I would like to introduce what we are, we are doing now. This is that we try to expand the capability of the realization because maybe many people think in the case of the ICPM spectrometer, solution neutralization is the best approach or best solution uh, introduction technique because precision and the trueness of the data is much better better than using that version. The question is now why? Why solution direction techniques can provide better precision or better reliability of the data? So I think the reason is this. In the case of solutions, we can dilute or we can mix in internal standard. Also we can use uh, we can adjust concentrations, we can spike, we can mix some components, <coughs> also we can spike some elements. For example, internal standard. But this is easy for the solution. But in case of the reservation, we can't do. So, how to, how to achieve this using lasers? So, this is the galvanometric optics, is very important. So, galvanometric optics is quite simple. Galvanometric optics is uh, composed of two rotation mirrors. So, this mirror is rotating very precisely. Uh, that is fast. So we can change the ablation pit very high, high speed. For example, if we change the angle of these mirrors, we can change the ablation pit. Like that. The time required for changing the ablation pit is uh, faster than 10 milliseconds. So we can switch we can switch the ablation pit quite fast time. So we can do as so many uh, ablation boards using galvanometric uh, objects. But this galvanometric optics is quite famous because everyone knows about it. Because this is a whole problem. This is some Japanese musician using that. But this is a, a, some sort of the galvanometric optics. And you can see this is, they're using only two lasers. Only two lasers. But uh, it looks like lots of many lasers. For example, this is two green lasers and blue lasers. There are lots of beams here. But this is only one laser. Uh, two lasers, sorry. Two lasers are using a galvan optics, they're changing the angle of the ablation. So just a simple, uh, just the same as galvan optics using in this in our laboratory. When we're using galvanometric uh, optics, we can use three different ablation modes. One is um, raster, so we can continuously raise ablation of the same, like irregular shape, something like that. And the second is a jumping, for example, the ablation we call the jumping ball. And also we call the shoot simultaneous ablation. We can ablate to different samples <coughs> alternatively by the fast time. So we can mix the cells inside the ablation cells. So using these cells we can we can use a many uh, calibration technique. One is one is when we ablate the two samples for the this DLG lock and this uh, this is blank samples. We, we have three different concentration standards for DLH, 6, 7, 8, it's containing no uh, black samples, 75, 150, we can ablate all, uh, both of these samples. Uh, second, of the round of these samples, uh, with these two samples, and third, we can ablate these two samples. So we, the data we got is uh, plotted at the concentration in, in the real content in these samples, and plotted against uh, the intensity we can ablate, we can obtain the temperature carbon. This is exactly the same as uh, dilution in solution. The same procedure. So we can use the dilution or mixing using uh, the photonic ablation. So similar, uh, we, if we put on the other, we, if we ablate three different uh, standards, uh, alternative fast route is uh, between this and this. Second one is this, third is this, we can obtain this conversion cup. So the offset, the data concentration on the hair is a uh, rare earth content, the concentration of the alloys in the unknown samples. This is being called standard addition. We are using we are using for the solution analysis. So even in some samples we can use the uh, standard addition technique for the laser ablation. So this is an example of the data obtained from the real earth element. So as you can see, uh, a good linear correlation can be 
of these cases because sulfide oxide and metal should have a different acceleration. So contamination is we have to avoid. So we are collecting better phases in lab so we can avoid the contamination. So I, I would like to show you during that result we got recent treatment. So this is a, a, the iron three isotope diamond showing that this is bulk contract. The contour has lighter isotope and the metallic phase has a heavier heavier isotope in that iron isotopes. But our data is suggesting uh, our data is here our data is much, much heavier than the previous liberty. But we don't know the reason why our data is much, much heavier than the previous one. But we believe that, that in this case, uh, I think the difference between uh, this data and this data, both are better in phase, the difference should be a different level of the contribution of the second phase. We think, we believe that we can measure only the metal phase. Projects uh, provide much, much heavier isolations. So, the combination of the laser vision as PMS and uh, lab teams can provide uh, many, expanding the many applications, possible applications. One is our science, which is all, all many, many people already studying, also in China, many people are starting to measure with their guns and um, trying to stabilize uh, studies. One is all deposit and metallic samples. In these two samples, the second laser is much, much better than nanosecond lasers. And also, imaging for the age imaging, also many people want to measure. And also, many people want to measure how and um, <coughs> when the acid and core is informed as climate change and the growth of history. So, everyone wants to uh, study this area. And the second application is biosciences. And this is start, uh, already started in European countries, especially for German. For example, they're using an SDS page. We just started uh, to using the pages again. Okay? And also, this is for the separation of proteins. They try to measure trust element in proteins. And also, imaging for the uh, biochemical samples, because the resolution, there's no need to put the sample in the vacuum regions. So even with samples, we can almost start with it. And also sensitivity, we can achieve it much, much higher than other technologies. So we can measure the uh, imaging of the trans element is not easy. And also finally, the material and engineering applications are also there. For example, steel, semiconductor, and solar cell, plastic. These samples so far, uh, in the case, when we're using nanosecond lasers, these samples are unwanted samples because of the thermal are very weak against the heat. But uh, in the case of femtosecond lasers, the thermal damage on the samples is much, much smaller than nanosecond lasers. So when using femtosecond lasers, maybe okay, we can measure the tears and conductors or cell samples and also plastic samples as well. So this is the conclusion. So better precision and sensitivity can be achieved even in metallic and all samples. Using, using shorter levels and shorter concentrations, and also in the galvanometric optics. So, analyzed can be designed and mixed and spiked with the second solid samples using a pseudo simultaneous ablation. And also, several unique applications, uh, such as standard addition or integration of small samples, can be achieved using galvanometric optics. Finally, we should recall. Some, uh, some in the spectrometry provide much higher sensitivity. <coughs> so now we are just starting to combine the laser ablation technique and the other high sensitivity of spectrometry. So the one solution is lab intense technique. Okay, uh, this is that all. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Of